guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for an active, friendly community of worm enthusiasts, you are in the right place. Today, we are going to be doing a huge harvest of castings from my African night crawlers. They are in my vermi bag, Lil Mammoth, and I have added more than 50 gallons of food and bedding since the last harvest three months ago. I'm hoping to get about 20 gallons of vermi compost to start my fall garden today. After we harvest, we're going to reset the bag, load it with more food and bedding. So the vermi bag is a continuous flow through system. Bedding and food go in the top and then finished compost comes out the bottom. So let's take a look here and get this zipper undone. Really need to put like a ribbon on it so I can reach all the way around. Okay, so you only do one half at a time with the little mammoth because otherwise it would all fall down at once. So I'm gonna take my trusty dusty claw here and I am going to start kind of raking out underneath. And then when I'm trying to see how far I have left to go, I typically use my hand so that I can feel the zipper because I'm just trying to get to about here. You can see it's making very, very nice castings. All right. It does take a little, you know, little bit of effort to kind of scrape around, but it's still the e easiest, fastest harvest um, of any of my systems. I mean, even blue, it is, it is easier than that. Simply because it is already dried out. I don't have to do any waiting. And also at the bottom, it's dry and the worms are all gone. So I don't know if you can see my finger moving, but my finger is about here. So I need to stop or everything is going to collapse. So we're gonna put the zipper back over here and then we're going to harvest the other side. Okay, so you can see this tray here slides from left to right for me so that I can slide over to the next side so that I can harvest this side of the panel. So I made this stand, so if you're wondering, um, I do have a video about that. And I think it's, I did have a urban worm bag once upon a time and, and I suppose I could have made a stand for it, I just didn't know any better but basically I just used the stand it came with and I had to like lay on the ground. There's still a playlist for the Urban Worm Bag if you wanna see it, but it was uh, early in my time of doing YouTube videos, so a little cringeworthy in the way of quality. So I'm just kind of feeling all the way around to see if I get all the harvest all the way around the zipper. And then I think I've almost got a full mortar tray here. So it's probably time to stop before I collapse the whole system. And then that would make a huge mess. So let me dig out the, the lid here and get that zipped back up. And then we can look and see what I have harvested here. I am not going to reset the bag until I get this out of the way because this is more flexible right now because it's empty and it'll be easier for me to get this mortar tray out of here. If I reset the bag uh, by giving it a couple wax here, um, all of the material that is up high will fall down low and then it'll make it harder for me to move this uh, mortar tray out. So we're gonna hold on for a second and I'll get this unplugged and we'll look and see how much we got. All right, here we are with the finished castings. They do look like they need a little bit of sifting here. Wouldn't really want all these seeds to end up in my garden or in my starting mix. And, uh, but other than that, looks pretty good. I've got a few of the, uh, the big seeds that haven't, you know, digested yet, but that's totally fine. Once I do the sifting, then they can go right back in the top and those worms can take another crack at it. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm just gonna give it a couple of punches here so that all the stuff from up high can settle back down underneath here. If you don't do that, there'll be a big, big air pocket. 
and um, the flow through system won't work right. So you, that's one of the things you have to do is you have to reset it. And sometimes I actually need to jab at it from the inside with like a broomstick or something to make sure everything has fallen down. Okay, here we are back up at the top. And as you can see that it has dropped quite a bit. This was totally full the last time that uh, we had been in here. So I'm going to take my little broom handle and make sure that it has fallen all the way down. Just because I think I don't hit it hard enough to uh, actually make it completely reset. So I do go in there with this broom handle and make sure that there are no open pockets. And I do that, I you know check to make sure there's no open pockets by whacking the outside of the bin again to make sure there's no holes. And then if I find more holes, then I go ahead and look like I'm rowing a boat here and get this part all sunk back in. So as I was uh, doing some canning last week, I went ahead and added, gave them some extra cabbage offline, but uh, you know, I figured it wasn't that much so they could get a little bit of a treat in between feedings. But today I'm going to see if there's anything left of the feeding we gave them last time. And I don't think there is simply because even the bedding on the top has been completely worked over. And uh, people in the comments were talking about uh, mites and, and, you know, are they good or are they bad? This is an example of a leaf. I'm gonna try and hold steer, still here for a second. But you can see how in between all of the veins on the leaf, it's all missing. That's the work of little mites and springtails. The worms didn't do that. But you can tell now that the uh, mites and springtails have done their job, a little worm can get in there and get some food too. So it really is an ecosystem that helps solve the problem of all the food that I give them. Okay, so I'm really not seeing anything here. Oh, looks like there's a potato peel. If you don't freeze them, they really do take quite a long time to uh, get used up in the bin. But other than some eggshells that didn't get ground up for some reason, I'm not seeing anything at all in here as far as food or bedding. So let's get them a really good meal. And uh, I hope worms don't get, you know, tired of any particular kind of food because they're gonna get broccoli stems. So my neighbors harvested their broccoli and asked if uh, I could use any of the leftover vegetation and stems. And I said, absolutely. They don't wanna hear that I have, you know, like a million worms in my house. So they prefer to call them turtles. So um, if anybody asks, this is turtle food. So here we go. We've got the nice big old stock. It's almost woody. That'll be interesting to see how long it takes them to, to get through that. But then the regular stems and leaves, I think should go pretty quick. It hasn't been frozen or anything. Look how woody that is. Um, it hasn't been frozen or anything. So this should be a good combination of slow food and fast food. Fast food being things they can get into in the next week or so. And then slow food is the things that, in my opinion, will probably take a month or better. So I'm gonna make sure that these big thick stems have good contact with the castings so that the biology of the bin can get started with them. And I think that's a pretty good size feeding, but they are definitely going to need some bedding to balance this nitrogen source. So I'm gonna be giving them about an equal amount of my prepared bedding, which is shredded paper cardboard and uh, coconut core. The little white flecks you see in there are basically uh, the ground eggshell. I add that to the bedding because otherwise I would never remember to add it uh, when I'm doing my regular feedings. So when I go to make the next batch of bedding, I'm gonna use some of the castings that I just harvested today and I'm gonna put that in with the bedding so that the microbes can get working on this bedding before I even feed it to the worms, thus making it faster food for the worms.
plus with it being cabbage, or not cabbage, but in the cabbage family, it is probably going to stink a bit. So I wanna make sure that it is absolutely covered very thickly with a row of bedding so that the smell doesn't uh, end up in my house. Cause the African night crawlers live on the same floor of the house as I do. Whereas blue and the red wigglers and the European night crawlers all live in the basement, uh, the smell won't drift up too much, but whatever I feed these guys, does have the potential to come out and stink up my house. So I'm a little bit careful about that, which is why we gave them probably double the bedding they probably really needed. Okay, so if you like the African Nightcrawlers or wanna learn more about the Vermibag Little Mammoth, I have a playlist right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like a video that's right over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.